Hello ladies and gentlemen and today I'm going to be talking about neutron stability and showing you how this new proposition that has been published by Bowser Limited naturally explains why lone neutrons are unstable but neutrons inside a stable nucleus are stable. In discussing this change of stability in neutrons we will also be talking about what makes protons always stable i.e. it doesn't matter if they are inside or outside a nucleus. We will also mention how heat is represented at this scale, before lastly talking about why radioactive decay is a random process. To start with we will look at protons and see why they are always stable. At the bottom here we've got a sequence of images which help to explain this. In the first image on the left we've got our standard proton ring and it is about to be hit by some energy shown by the lightning bolt. When this energy has been absorbed by the proton it causes the ring to vibrate as shown in the second image. Lastly the proton re-emits a proportion of this vibrational energy through its hull before the whole process starts again. Thus the total energy captured by the proton cannot continuously grow since it is able to emit a proportion of this vibrational energy through its hull and hence the proton is always stable. However, the pictures at the bottom are overly simplified, since initially the proton would be vibrating, and when the energy hits it, this would just cause the vibrations to increase. Finally, when the protons emit a proportion of this vibrational energy, it would still be vibrating afterwards. In fact, the only time the proton would stop vibrating is if it was at absolute zero, i.e. minus 273 degrees C as this vibrational energy is what we would commonly refer to as heat. Thus, this energy given off by the proton is heat radiation. In other words, if the energy heating the proton is higher than what is being emitted, then the proton would heat up, so to speak. Whereas, if the energy heating the proton is lower than what's being emitted, then the proton would cool down. If we now take the same sequence of events and apply them to a lone neutron, then the following happens. So we've got this lone neutron ring, shown on the left, that is about to be hit by some energy, which again causes the ring to vibrate. However, the neutron, unlike the proton, is a complete ring, i.e. it has no hull. Thus, the neutron is unable to emit any of this energy. Hence, over time, this energy builds up, until it reaches a critical value, at which point the neutron ring breaks into a proton and an electron as well as emitting some energy, i.e. a standard beta decay. Conversely, if a neutron is located inside a nucleus, then it is directly connected to other protons or neutrons. Hence, in this situation, when a neutron is hit by some energy, it can transfer some of that energy through its superposition points, i.e where it connects to its neighbouring protons or neutrons. When the energy ends up in a proton, some of it is then emitted by the proton through its hull, stabilising the neutrons within the nucleus. However, if there are still too many neutrons, for example in hydrogen 3, which has one proton and two neutrons, then the protons cannot emit enough energy fast enough to stabilise the neutrons. Therefore, after a period of time, energy builds up and one of the neutrons beta decays. This, by definition, reduces the number of neutrons and increases the number of protons, and thus increases the number of particles that are able to re-emit the incoming energy, and thus help to stabilise the overall nuclear structure. For any one neutron or nucleus, its radioactive decay is a random event and the reason for this randomness is down to the packets of energy hitting it. This is because the rate at which these objects are being hit is not a constant and each of the packets of energy contains a different amount. Thus, one lone neutron could be hit quickly with two high packets of energy whilst another is not hit at all. Also, in the case of a nucleus, it depends upon how the energy is distributed throughout all of its different protons and neutrons as they will all have different amounts that are continuously changing. Overall, therefore, we've seen that protons are always stable because they're able to emit a proportion of the energy that's hit them through their hull. 
Neutrons, however, don't have a hole in their rings and so cannot emit this energy, which is why when they're on their own they are radioactive. Inside a nucleus, however, they are able to transfer this energy to their neighbouring protons and neutrons. Then, if there is enough protons within the nucleus, then they can emit sufficient energy to stabilise all the neutrons contained within the nucleus. Otherwise, eventually, one of the neutrons will still build up sufficient energy, causing it to decay. We also said that this vibrational energy contained in the protons and neutrons is what represents heat at this scale. Thus, a proton, which is vibrating more than another, is effectively hotter. Lastly, we mentioned that radioactive decays are a random event because of the random nature of the energy packet hitting the protons and neutrons. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. If you'd like to know more information about this proposition, then please visit our website at www.belder-limited.co.uk and or see our other videos. Lastly, please note that this proposition has not yet been accepted, so don't use it to answer exam questions. However, we would like to hear your views, opinions and questions regarding it. So, thank you for watching.